less than a week removed from celebrating Black History Month. And when sports fans think of athletes who broke the color barrier, some of the first names are Jackie Robinson in baseball, Jesse Owens at the Olympics, or even Willie O'Ree in hockey. But in NASCAR, it's Wendell Scott. This year marks the 60th anniversary of his first Cup Series race. And thanks to his determination and drive, he gave the green light for anyone and everyone to get behind the wheel. It seems like yesterday. Uh, obviously, you know, I do a lot of uh, reminiscing about, about, you know, the past and my father's career. And I think back, um, you know, I, I got, we got, it's, it's, it's a bittersweet thing. You know, uh, even though the struggle was hard, we enjoyed it. We wouldn't have done anything else. My father wouldn't have, wouldn't have taken any other path than which he took. In 1961, Wendell Scott became the first African-American to run in NASCAR. The Cup Series was then known as the Grand National Series. Today, he's seen as a pioneer, but at a time of segregation and racism, he was seen as a pariah. Among the many challenges facing an African-American in the 50s and 60s, there were times Scott wasn't even allowed to compete at certain tracks because of the color of his skin. And when he was, he became an instant target. That was 34, Wendell Scott, who found the going a little rough and lost it in the fourth turn. He went through some things that uh, he shouldn't have had to go through. You know, he had to navigate through what he was trying to accomplish uh, because he had a lot of obstacles. You know, once he cleared one, there was another one. Scott passed away at the age of 69 in 1990. Among those continuing his legacy is his son Frank and his grandson Warwick who created the Wendell Scott Foundation, a national nonprofit organization helping the underserved youth with STEM education opportunities. Frank is one of seven children and one who was on the road with his dad during his racing career, experiencing firsthand those roadblocks on and off the track. You know, restaurants, it's, we had a lot of, you know, um, white friends and we would park, you know, two or 300 yards away from the truck stop if we wanted a, a meal that was warm and, and we, it was safe to eat. Uh, otherwise, we had to go to the back one, and we didn't know what was coming out of the back one. Over a 13-year career, Scott ran in 495 Cup events with 147 top 10 finishes, and he did it all without any major sponsorships. And to never have obtained the affection of corporate America when that's what ran the sport, you know, it, it's just. It's just unbelievable. Would Wendell Scott like to have had that opportunity to have a big sponsor? Yes, I would have. <laughs> I tried. I tried every beer company, insurance company, car manufacturer. Everybody I thought would, that was putting money into racing, I tried them and they wouldn't help me. A lot of people would have given up and quit, but my father, you know, quitting was, was ever in his, in his plan. It wasn't even, you know, he didn't believe in can't never. He didn't believe in you couldn't, uh, you couldn't frighten him. He said, he said, one day they're going, somebody's going to realize what, what I'm trying to do. One of Scott's crowning achievements came in December of 1963, when he earned his first and only Cup Series victory in Jacksonville. What should have been the best day of his racing career was just another example of racism on the racetrack. Officials waiting nearly three hours before announcing him as the winner. You know, he's the only only driver in NASCAR ever win a, 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 a sprint car race and didn't get his trophy. The only, <laughs> only one out of the thousands of races, the thousands of drivers. How's that sound? Wendell Scott raced not just for the checkered flag, but for the check so that he could continue to feed and support his family. Scott may be known as a driver, but to those who knew him, he was much more. He was a chief mechanic. He was a car builder. He was a driver, he was a reviver, he was a protector, you know, he, he did it all. People would ask me who was my picture, who was my mechanic, I said me, <laughs> and I was. In 2015, Wendell Scott was inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, a true trailblazer during a tragic time in American history. So Wendell Scott's legacy is, you know, it's not just a American sports story, it's an, you know, it's an American story. Um, you know, for everyone who can identify with, you know, having to fight for something, you know, maybe not always having the resources um, that you need. It does not mean that you cannot make it or achieve. And he did it at the highest level under, under in my opinion, um, some, of the, some of the most tragic circumstances of anyone that's ever participated in a sport in American history. I'm sure that there's been times that you wish, boy, I wish I had been born 30 years later. 
Well, yes, but maybe somebody can profit by what I did start. Well, you got a you got a lot of memories to think back over and things. I guess you'd say, well, boy, I wish I hadn't done that. No, I'd do it all over again. Tremendous example of the human spirit. Now, Scott was forced to retire due to injuries sustained in a crash at Talladega in 1973. Fast forward 47 years to 2020. At that same track, we saw one of the most memorable moments and symbols of solidarity in NASCAR when the entire garage supported and stood with Bubba Wallace. Now, as we know, Bubba has been sponsored and partially funded by billionaire David Stewart. The Scott family tells me they have formed a venture with Stewart to begin work on a treatment to bring the Wendell Scott story to light through film, TV, and even documentary.